had it many times at Japanese restaurants, but you've actually never even eaten it. No, I'm perfectly uh, virgin to sea urchins. Try it out. I'm a champion! Last time on our best ever Central Vietnam bike tour, Andrew and I ended up in the coastal city of Nha Trang. We're going to the coast. For sure, it's going to be something from the ocean, something that swims. I'm a I toured a mega-sized birdhouse. Are they gonna hit me? Oh my god! Ah! And we both ate one of the world's most expensive foods. This is what I've been waiting for. Raw bird's nest soup. The flavor is in the storytelling behind the food. I like it. Today we've run out of rope. So now we're heading into the ocean. I'm so curious, how many fishing farms are there here? Not far from the city exists an entire village on the water, home to those making a living off the ocean. He's brought the net all the way up. You can see there's about a hundred of these fish. But this way of living and this way of eating, it's nothing like you've seen before. Andrew and I are on a mission to blend in. This guy's got like gills or something. I don't know how he stayed down there for so long. Earning our keep. And go! And getting our sea legs. So we're both doing what we want to do this time? Yeah. That is. Teamwork. Only. Final. If we don't fall apart first. I have you on my show and you ruin my show! No, I'm bringing the reality to this. No! Before all that, we're in the city of Natrang, ready to fuel up before shipping out. Let's eat. Well, good morning, everybody. Here, we have a dish special to this area. Mm. It's jellyfish noodles, Andrew. Huh. This popular local delicacy has been offered in this restaurant for 38 years. Jellyfish noodles, made simply with vermicelli, jellyfish, fish cake, fish balls, and fish meat. All joined together with a steaming hot, savory fish bone broth. I didn't even know jellyfish is something you could eat. Have you had this before? Yeah, that's Joining our meal, yeah, yeah. Chow, experienced local tour guide for Eat Like a Local. Across from him, Miss Tan, vice president of this region's tourism board and overall jellyfish noodle fan. This is her favorite noodle soups when she was young, mm. around 10 years old. Wow, fantastic. Some lime. Oh, God. Oh, yes. So this purple, stinky shrimp paste. It's mandatory. Andrew, I can do yours, too. Yeah. <laughs> do no, no, no. No? Too little? No. A little bit of chilies, some fish sauce, and I'm going to give that all a nice mix. I want to try just straight-up jellyfish. I've never had this in my life. Let's do it. Oh. That's a fun texture. It's just taking on some of the flavor of that really rich, savory broth. Right. It's just got kind of a crunchy texture to it. Yeah, it's kind of like a gummy bear. Like a gummy bear? But without any flavor. <laughs> <laughs> Take one more bite. A little broth, a little boon. She asked, is it good? It's really good. It's right. fresh, super savory. For jellyfish noodles, I thought this would have a lot more jellyfish, but it's not just about the jellyfish. It's like all the flavors of the coastline mixed together. Right. Fish, noodles, fish sauce, shrimp paste, like everything coming together in one bowl. Mm. So you grew up in Nha Trang. Sinh ra thì ở Hà Nội, nhưng theo bố mẹ vào Nha Trang từ năm 1975. You've been in Nha Trang for the last 35 years. Since you've been here, how have you seen this city change? Theo cảm nhận của mình thì từ thở và còn nhỏ, mình chưa hình dung được là như thế nào. Nhưng bây giờ đến khi mình đã là một công chức rồi thì mình thấy là Nha Trang là thay đổi diện mạo rất là nhanh chóng nhất là trong những cái năm gần đây khi mà du lịch phát triển. Just a couple decades ago, this region was nearly completely undeveloped. Now it's a destination known locally and internationally for its natural beauty, islands and beaches, and of course, their unique regional cuisine. Nha Trang really keep a very important role in the tourism beaches of the whole Vietnam. Yep. One of the big reasons we want to talk to you is because tourism has become such an issue right now. Because of Corona, it's basically devastated the tourism industry. If you look at May last year to May this year, international tourism is down like a 98%. And so for a city like Nha Trang, it's especially devastating because a huge amount of these businesses depended on international tourists. So the question is, what is the Nha Trang Tourism Board doing to bring back tourism to this city? Back 
until I'm complete. So first of all, the government have the information to every single hotel, tourist company, how to face with the pandemic. Make sure 100% that Nha Trang is safe now. And then she would like to share more the plan to announce the friendly and safely destinations mm -hmm. uh, so they can welcome the tourists back. First of all, the domestic. domestic. And then popular everywhere for international tourism. For a while, even while this video was being recorded, Vietnam had COVID-19 under control. It seemed like it had been eradicated from Vietnam altogether. Cities like Nha Trang had even begun the long journey of bouncing back, starting with domestic tourism. Unfortunately, after this recording, another wave of COVID-19 infections hit, likely due to illegal border crossing from China. We know it's tough times right now. What is your hope for the future? Ngành du lịch của Khánh Hòa thì luôn luôn phát triển bền vững Cho nên là chúng tôi sẽ làm từng bước Hy vọng là qua các cái kênh thông tin thì truyền thông thì nó sẽ có hiệu ứng nhanh hơn Vietnam has already won once going head to head with the virus I believe they can do it again This is going to be one of our final cards I mean this is our final experience This says Today you're going to experience the not-so-touristy side of this touristy region. Experience the people, food, and natural beauty that put this place on the map. Mm. Expect to get wet. Wet. We're here just a little bit outside the city of Nichang in this beautiful beachside village. And uh, we're with Aunt Mai Man here. Dude, sir, how you doing? Sin Chang? <laughs> Good, very informal handshake. This is Mr. T, father to a family of six, living in a modest home, close to a pristine beach that's not yet lost its luster to development or tourism. Meaning, this is an ideal place for fishermen to do what they do best. A lot of the people living on the coast, they have some kind of job in the fishing industry. And seafood is hugely popular here. We can see that in our little breakfast, we've got some sticky rice. And on top, what is that actually? I think it's gakko. Like the same thing we made the fish sauce out of in the first episode. It does smell pretty fishy, but uh, it's pretty neutral. Exactly, it's just like Andrew talking about cat gum. They uh, stir fry with chili, put on top of the sticky rice. Well, what I've learned this trip, I flip and love sticky rice. There's not enough of it in the world and in Vietnam. I agree. Oh, it's really pleasant. Mm, you didn't feel the bones at all. Yeah, bones are pretty soft. It's another type of thing where the fish are like half food, half seasoning mm, to right. bring the rice to life. So the rice is more exciting. Mm. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. It's really good food. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't actually know what we're doing today. Yeah, oh. that's his, his daughter. She, thank you. Yeah, come on. What's going on here? Well, I much prefer her to me. Gentlemen, this is the final day of your journey. Congratulations on making it this far, but you're not finished yet. Where you're going today, your bites will be of no use. Oh, probably the water. Today, you each must catch your own food and contribute to a family feast. I knew it. You decide who catches what, and we'll see you at the finish line. Hi. Um, first of all, thank you for being here. Second, can you help teach us how to catch stuff today? Yeah, he doesn't seem that interested, actually. <laughs> so he's saying he's gonna go down to the water. You can even go into some of the small caves and catch the lobster. Oh, lobster would be great. If you want to stay on the boat, you're going to get some sweet, mm. but 50%. Oh. <laughs> Andrew, I feel like we've been going head to head a lot this trip. In your face, sunny side. Listen, if you want to go on the boat, you go on the boat. No, no, I want to go on the water. Wait, you really want to go on the water? It feels like the more adventurous thing to do. Wait, so we're both doing what we want to do this time? Yeah. That's great. Perfect. Teamwork. Final. A village like no other. Dozens of part-time homes on the ocean. They've got kitchens, they've got bathrooms, but their purpose is as a type of ocean farm. Aquaculture, like agriculture, but on water. 
Fishermen store fish or lobsters here before selling, or they fatten them up, feeding them sometimes up to a year before the fish go to market. So he said this is fish with around five, six months on. He catches the babies and then rears them, or does he buy the baby? You have to buy nursery fish mm. to put it in here. It's around two dollars per fish. Of course, we won't be eating any seafood from Mr. T's farm today. That would be too easy. Instead, Andrew and I are heading out into the open ocean and attempting to catch a meal for ourselves. I am here with Mr. T. But with a little help. We are the go team. We got the fisherman's son. And we've got you. Of course. Do you have any yes. fishing experience? Mm, actually, my dad is the fisherman. All right. But I never fished before. Okay. At this point, I'll take whatever help I can get. Have you caught squid before by yourself? Then you will. So, can you just make me look good, please? To the best of my knowledge, we are here to catch two things. Lobsters and sea urchins. And T.I. Min bat nyum ni sao. That was fast. <laughs> right here, he's got a tool. It's designed to look like a little shrimpy with a ton of spikes. Okay, so it's. Ooh, be careful. I caught myself. In theory, it sounds like an easy plan. Just knock it in. I'm gonna feel a lot more confident once I have some of these bad boys inside this net. I can't go back empty handed. Not this time. Not again. Out here. Okay, we're gonna get in. Besides sun, wind, water, oh, and a boat. That feels good. <laughs> you've got nothing. You're gonna fish, and I'm gonna watch you and learn, okay? Mm. So please, uh, show me. <laughs> show me your ways. <laughs> you wanna pluck something to eat from the ocean? You better develop your own methods quick, or you're gonna go hungry. Therefore, out of necessity, a tool like this is born and a new skill acquired. This guy's got like gills or something. I don't know how he stayed down there for so long. This isn't something they teach in books, but knowledge handed down from generation to generation. He gave it a nice toss, and then he starts to reel it in. He gives it a tug, and then he waits again. Oh, look, Mr. T just made that look real easy. I'm a little bit worried about this. Look how spiky these things are. I did not expect them to be moving this much. So far, we've been fishing for about 49 seconds. We've not caught anything. You have to be very patient. Oh. The best way to learn MPI. is to get hands on. Okay. So, I've got the rod, I've got the spool. Go! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Sh go! <laughs> you know what the. Go! All right, good. Give it some line, let it sink. Right now, Andrew is in the water. Oh, he okay. has a better chance. He's looking the fish in the eyes. Give it a tuck. We want the shrimp to act like a shrimp. These squid are gonna be like, whoa, what an elegant, realistic shrimp. I'm going to eat that now. Even with skill and plenty of patience, luck is a major factor. That's my first net full of sea urchins. The trickiest thing about it, I think, is uh, trying to swim with the net in your hand. But I've got to admit, it's pretty fun. There's plenty of this down there. Sometimes good fortune smiles upon you. And sometimes... Oh, what is this? Oh, that's just, you know, that's a lure. That's the lure. Okay. She flips you the bird. So, feedback. How was that? <laughs> like this level. Jesus, so intense. <laughs> it's my first time. Take it easy, kid. All right, let me try again. Ooh. Better. Usually, how long does it take? Sometimes, he get the squid around two to three minutes. Ah. Sometimes, half an hour. Someday, there's nothing. Oh, <laughs> no. Okay, let me just bring it in. We need to get creative. Right now, Andrew is catching maybe sea urchins. <laughs> oh, good God. Maybe a chicken or a duck. Look, we've got food. This is a catch and cook that worked out. How did this happen? This is surreal. He's getting a lot of stuff down there. I know Sonny and I have really been kind of going at each other, but I did great. I hope he did great too. This is going to be one hell of a final meal. Do you have any squid on the boat already, kid? Yes. You do? Wait, you know English? Yeah. What the? F <laughs> What's going on? Okay, I think that we pretend to catch it and then we delete this conversation. Yes. So my buddy Andrew won't see it. Oh, is that squid dead already? Yes. Are there any? <laughs> what is my shell? I think we just do it. I don't think Andrew will know. Ooh. Tug on it a little bit. Oh, I think I got something on here. Really? What is this? What's going on? What? Let's oh, I can on. see it. Really? Oh, it looks like a real squid. Oh my God. Oh, oh, it's really right? heavy. 
Dude, I gotta admit, I'm kind of impressed with Sonny. Like, I didn't think he'd catch shit. Keep swimming. Keep swimming. He's doing really well. Oh, yes! Yes! We did it! Whoa! We did it. Woo! Nice. What, what the hell? Like, that squid's not even moving. What an amazing creature. Just a majestic... Look, did he throw a dead squid into the ocean and pull it back out? Man, what the... Andrew, we just got back from getting our contribution to this family feast. What'd you get? We got heaps of sea urchins, man. We even got a lobster. It went great. That's really nice. Yeah, and how did you go, Sunny Sun? Great as well. We uh, got a bunch of squid. We got no. three. No, you didn't, man. <laughs> what are you? I reviewed the footage. I saw it. You saw the footage? I saw the squid was dead, bro. You took a dead squid and you threw it in the ocean, man. No. I was busting my ass. What do you want me to do? I was with the 14-year-old kid. How about not fake it? How about not reveal that I faked it on my show? I almost died for this fucking show. It's not even my show. How do I even know you really got those sea urchins? Maybe he just put them there for you. No, that was hard work. I was super proud of my efforts. And here you are. I don't know, catching frozen food. Um, sorry about that. Uh, I guess what we really want to know is just more about your lifestyle here. How does it work? You have this beautiful farm. How long have you had a farm here? So, uh, can I talk? Okay. It's been like a seven years already. He's wake up quite early in the morning, around 5 a.m. And then he'll double check everything, take care of all of the fish. He's also go out fishing around. Sometimes he has it, sometimes he doesn't have anything. Sometimes it's impossible to catch fish, right? Oh, yeah, it's impossible. But you still need content for your channel. <laughs> yeah. So Fishing these days isn't like it was years ago. All right, so he's pulling up the net here. It's a common refrain for fishermen around the world. Wow. More and more effort for the same amount of fish. You can see there's about 100 of these fish. The catch he brings in includes cobia, barramundi, trevally, and queenfish. What is the most expensive you have? This is the lobster. Lobster is one of this region's most popular seafood treats, getting up to around two pounds. Lucky for me, these are on today's menu, along with Andrew's catch of the day. This is your first time catching the sea urchin, but you've actually never even eaten it. No, that's wild to me. He begins by cutting off all these spikes. He starts slicing into the body, and then he opens the lid, and inside you can see all these little egg rows. Mm. So the stuff underneath is just not good. Don't eat it. He squeezed some lime on there. Try it out. It was really good, really good. It's not as smooth as I thought it would be. I thought those eggs would just separate right in your mouth. There's some chew to it. It's not fishy in any way, which is kind of surprising. If you ain't me. Uh, here's the thing. I've had sea urchin a few times. I don't really like it. To me, it's rich and creamy, and that part is nice, but then it tastes metallic at the end. On the other hand, this is super fresh. Still that like rich, creamy, a little metallic. I think it's pretty decent. All right, I like it. Nice work, dude. Nice. You are officially the best gatherer I've ever worked with. Gathered? This is a live animal. It's moving. I right. think that counts as like hunting. Oh, maybe it's extreme gathering. Oh, okay, I'll take that. Extreme gathering sounds like right. a, a decent compromise. It's pretty epic. Yeah. Cooking is underway. First up, grilled sea urchin. Set atop a fiery charcoal stove. Add scallion oil and let the fire do the work. Next, remember the squid I caught? These guys are cleaned and steamed. The lobsters get a similar treatment, steamed with a hit of MSG. When you're cooking in a kitchen in the middle of the ocean, preparation methods are a bit limited. But here, our greatest flavor enhancer is the absolute freshness of this seafood. Gentlemen and gentle kid, <laughs> we have done it. Look at this. Yeah. What a feast. I think we should jump into it. Where can we start? Can I try the sea urchin? Because we already tried the raw version, and now this has been grilled. It doesn't feel like there's a lot in there. Oh, yeah, it's become more condensed and kind of dried to the shell. Right. I'm going to try it out. Oh, that's good and wildly different from the raw version. It has a bold flavor, not something you wouldn't expect to be joined with the seafood. Well, especially considering previously, it was actually kind of smooth, pretty, it was creamy and rich, but not that flavorful. This is very strong. Yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah. Yes. How about these? Can we try these out? So these are some lobsters. 
He's cut up the lobster here. This right. looks fantastic. Even better, a beer boat just came, oh, and the beer's coming right now. Oh, yeah. Hey, we're very happy. Yo. So you don't take the whole tail. He just takes like one bite at a time. All right, so give it a dip. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Oh. That's really good lobster. Soft, flavorful lobster. Yeah, it adds like a real meaty flavor, actually. Probably that umami. Sweet Great. meat. It's really good. Lobster's always good. But I mean, this is super fresh. Right out here, I mean, this is great. We started off today in Nichang, yeah. learning about how the pandemic has really devastated mm. the tourism industry yeah. there. Here, a good distance outside the city, I mean, is he even aware that there's a pandemic going on? And if so, has it affected his life in any way? Mm. Mm. So actually, it does affect his economic because of the import-export. For example, the lobster, the price is going to drop down like one third. Super remote and still? Still affected. I mean, every part of the food chain seems to be affected in some way, unless you serve bamboo red. Right. The pandemic don't affect much on him. Pandemic proof. Right. For the great moon in the middle of June, falling up to the pole of the tide. Life on the water is tough. This is tough squid. People here live now as many previous generations have. Grab a piece, give it a bit of a dip. So it's hard to imagine what changes in lifestyle the future may hold. I like it. It's been really incredible kind of seeing your lifestyle here, how you live. It's very different than other parts of Vietnam. And I'm curious, you have a big, beautiful family. What is your wish for your children and their future? As a father and as a provider, Mr. T must decide if his son should continue school past the age of 14 or commit to helping full time with the family business. He chose the family business. But given their specific line of work and their financial challenges, I'm not sure how much of a choice it really was. Andrew, from Da Nang to Nichang, going through the whole central region of the country, known and unknown, touristy spots and untouristy spots. What's the, the one thing you learned that really surprised you? Just how quickly Vietnam is changing. Like even in the mountains, even in a time like with Corona where things are changing at a slower pace, at least I would imagine in these rural communities, just the pace of change, it's wild. It's even like a place like this, I don't know, but I can't imagine this sort of way of life continuing for that long. Worst food, best food from this whole trip. Worst food was pretty uh, anything with bile. Oh, is that the bile? Yes. You think it's a fish sauce? Oh. <laughs> bile is effed, man. For me, the porcupine bile dish, ah, right. I can't handle it. Right. Oh, yeah. it's, that is such an acquired taste, but that deep, violent bitterness, yeah. I, I couldn't handle it. Oh. What'd you put in there? It's so bitter. And the best food you had? The eel noodles. All right. That stuff was like butter, it melted in your mouth, the flavor was amazing. I'm trying to think of how I can get back to Bumoto just to try that again. I really loved Bee's cooking in Hoi An. Oh, interesting. Great cooking, but an even better company. You came reassuring, Mother Nature's procuring. There's no need for doubt in this mind. Hundreds of miles traveled, dozens of meals eaten, and a few very meaningful connections made. Eventually, Corona is going to be gone. When Corona is gone, when we don't have to worry about it, do you think Hoi An will come back to life quickly? Depend on how much damage from Corona. But I would say that for the 21st century, of course, most of people have enough food to eat. You have plenty of clothes to wear. So what is your luxury? Travel. As soon as you already travel, you can stop yourself that to think about next destination. And there will be travel a lot more. That is another type of food. So if you won't give up. There's no need for doubt in this I've rediscovered what I already knew. 
Vietnam lies between the big population areas. Xin Chao, fishermen. In the places that are hard to get to. Yes, they've greeted us. Far from tourist offices. What do you call these in your country, oh, Andrew? Or daily conveniences. Dude, that's still farming. These things don't give up. The journey is long and hard. Now we will tell the intestine. But whatever effort you put into it. Wow, I am very impressed. You'll get back. Mo. Hi. And more. Yo. In the jar. Cheers. Researching and shooting to editing and mastering, our 10-person best ever food review show team works hard to roll out the highest quality travel food entertainment twice a week. If you like what we do here, please consider supporting our Patreon. Patreon allows fans of the show to contribute a monthly sum and receive a load of extras like early video releases, private Q&As, and beyond. To learn more about our Patreon, check out the link in the description box down below. And if you can't give or don't even feel like it, that's okay too. <laughs> We're just happy you're here. That is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. A peace. All right. How do we get out of here? This is like our most precarious. Um, we should take this boat. Yeah. yeah, we should take the boat. Let's take the boat. We can steal this family. There's. We. I found a boat. Show me love.